Chalice Con is a show about war, obsession, colonialist occupation, and the many forms of violence those inflict. See the description for content warnings specific to this episode. Speaker of the House bangs their gavel twice to signal the beginning of this session of the legislature. This war was supposed to be over in a year. We are now in the third year of this war. What exactly is my style, Doctor? Well, your style is that of a soldier. I have not held this position long, but even I can see we are shit at public image. If we really want to get onto their side, we should have to learn how to think of them, don't you think? So does anyone else have a speech they want to make or more horse trading to do? I would like to make a speech. Okay. You got slides for it? I do not, unfortunately. Oh, uh, that's fine. So instead of like a fancy presentation, Sandra's going to go up to the podium with like his just completely disheveled leaf of notes in a manila folder, adjusts his glasses and says, Hey everyone, how are we uh, how are we doing today? <laughs> Here on the war front. Doing great. Cool, cool. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so uh I didn't really have a presentation, uh I didn't have like a fancy thing or anything, but uh I do have a proposal that I would like to field for everyone. So, what do we know about Kaliskop? About the culture, about the people, about Everything that just makes them so gung-ho to come here for a full year and do all the Kelazar things that they do. I think that we could learn more. I think that to defeat your enemy, you need to know your enemy. And so, my proposal is thus. We get our best squad to covertly investigate their outfit. Learn about the merchandise. Learn about the... Movies, the OVAs, the ARG stage plays. Once we learn that, we'll learn what makes them tick. And that would make them a much more malleable obstacle to work around. What do you all say? Who's our best squad? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think our best squad is? Couldn't we just get an aide to watch the show? No, see... We need to walk among them as if we are them. That's, I believe that's the best course going forward. Representative Mavis, is that everything? Uh, yeah, thank you. And he kind of like does a bit of an adjustment of his glasses, tucks his folder under his uh, arm, and kind of gives like a little bit of a bow before walking off stage. You have to say you yield your time. I, I yield my time, by the way. Thank you, Representative Mavis. Double thumbs up. It's back down. Adjust his tie. <sighs> so, Dr. Kane, what's your reaction to that speech? I, th I think there's kind of a, a laugh. Like, she actually kind of like giggles a little bit uh, when Red shouts out from the back of the, cl uh, the room. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, of course this is what's going to happen. I don't think she considers herself the most experienced person here, but I feel like she thinks that her experience is showing. All right. What's Red's reaction? Red feels a little flummoxed. <laughs> maybe, maybe a tiny bit worried. You get, you get a new belief whenever someone makes a speech. 
So important context is after Fishy made his speech earlier, I made a new belief for Fishy, which is Fishy is going to get himself killed. Uh, my new belief with Zandra is Zandra is going to get himself killed. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to do the killing, Red? Who's going to do the killing? It takes all sorts in this world. Fishy, what's your reaction to that speech from Zandra? Kind of confused why no one else was responding to the questions. <laughs> Except for Philodendron. <laughs> But, like, also, it feels unnecessary to infiltrate Kalazcon when all of the content is out there for us to consume. Speaking of Kalazar Media, Gishlak, what was your reaction to this? That I appreciate uh, Zandra's enthusiasm. I think it's naive, but I also think, like, yes, more people in the DFS do need to understand, as we're dealing with Hestial, more of our forces do need to understand what Kalazkan is about. I, I don't think that he's entirely wrong. I think his presentation could have been a little bit better. But all in all, you know, we're, we have the same goal, just with slightly different approaches. Great. So just as a reminder, everyone gets another connection with Zandre for that speech that he gave. Who has some horse trading in mind? I have a horse I would like to trade if nobody else wants to go right now. Go Take it away. Fishy, how would you like some horses? Sure. Okay. I think this scene is... I think you have been invited to tour one of the hangars that is, like, nearby the university. It's, um, like, a, a short walk away, so I, I feel like there there might have been, like, a, an awkward, like, uh, golf cart ride there. Once, once they, they sort of arrive there, um, I think it's just like sort of like a big wide shot of the two of them like walking down just like a, a really, really big warehouse with like the, these obvies just like standing there, like being serviced, um, but it, like more as like a background element. And I, I think she asks, Mr. Fischl, do you know why I brought you here today? Oh, please call me Fishy. Well, Fishy, uh, do you know why I brought you here today? Uh, can't say I'm sure, doctor. I brought you here today because you need an ally. And I'm certain that I'm not the only one that has realized this, but you're well out of your depth. Can't say I've uh, dove this deep before, no. But I'm making it work. I should hope so. Um, and while normally I am all for pushing boundaries and trying new things, there needs to be a certain level of, shall we say, uh, caution and care around that so here and i think she just sort of like broadly gestures towards like a one, one of the obvious standing there is like sparks flying like a, the sound of like a grinder in the background this is one of the projects of the farm of state this is uh something we're working on top secret don't tell anyone and does the lock lips key throws it away gesture and i brought you here because this is what a fully powerful squad looks like this is what I'm managing, and I want to help you get here. I, I think you have a lot of potential, and I want to make sure that you are able to really see that and realize that. Okay. Uh, I appreciate your generosity here. What's uh, brought this all about? <laughs> There's been a lot of conversations about, oh, what should we vote for? What what the uh, the actual plan should be going forward? And... I want to make you a deal because this deal is going to be in your best interest because I do believe that you need someone looking out for you. And I'm, I'm hoping that a show of good faith will be taken as such good faith, uh, an olive branch, so to speak. So I can uh, kick some of this material your way. And if you could, you could uh, try and help me with what I think the best course of action here is, which is trying to end the war. Get everyone home. And how do you plan to go about doing that, Doctor? Diplomacy. This is a war, but not all weapons are guns. In the background, there's giant guns. Kagan's furrowing his brow like the Guns are... Guns are how wars are won, Doctor. Are they? I think 
guns are worn, uh, won by words. Words, money in the right hands, grease palms, that kind of thing. Guns just help it along a little bit. So what do you want me to do? What's the string here? There isn't one. You're just giving me material. I want you to vote with me. But this is a, a vote that I think is in your best interest. You've expressed in the past that you want this war to end. And so do I, so do we all. But I think if we try and <sighs> embroil ourselves in espionage or burn down more buildings or uh, recklessly attack people, then that's not going to be what happens. So, but to be perfectly frank and perfectly transparent, part of me is offering because I'm worried that Somebody else with not so good intentions will come along after me and say, hey, uh, let me solve all of your problems for you, and you won't have somebody telling you to look out for yourself. Is the legislature really that dangerous? I thought we were three blinks. I thought we were safe here on Logel. I'm not worried about the, the, the Jovangelian forces here, no. I'm not worried about anything that could reach us from the um, fanatics at Kalaskon. No, I, I think you should be watching your back more. Not all dangers come from outside the DFS. Takes a deep breath, looks around at, at the giant gun, realizing that he's in the middle of Dr. Kane's territory. I see. Well, Doctor, I'm not one to refuse such generous gifts as this. You'll have my vote, and I'll take that material. And just remember that I am earnest here. This is in your best intention. I do care that you're able to make it through this just as much as any of our soldiers. I appreciate that, Doctor. But I decide how I feel about things. Holds out hand. A handshake. And despite being so tall and skinny, he's got like a really strong handshake. Like he still is doing all of the military exercises that he was put through. You're shaking her metal hand. But <laughs> so he, he comes back with a little blood. Oh shit! <laughs> Whoops! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, puts that behind him. It's, it's not. It's not covered in razors. No. But <laughs> puts that behind him, uh, like he's at ease. Doctor, fishy. I guess so, that's scene. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then just to clarify, I was giving myself a minus one supply roll modifier for your votes on the ace. Yeah. Okay, so Fishy, take the plus one to your supply roll modifier. Yep. And I have another um, belief with Fishy, right? Yes, you do. Okay, so Red, Fishy, or Gishlak, who wants to do another scene? Uh, I also need to... Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. I think I, mine would benefit from a little bit of distance. Uh, I also need to trade horses with Fishy, so... <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So I think... You receive a message just asking, like, hey, do you have a good time? And that this is before, we'll set this as a flashback before the meeting and all the speeches and stuff. You just get a message of like, hey, before we go to, you know, the subcommittee in a couple of days, we need to hash a thing out. Can you come stop by my office at some point? Sure. And Kagan Fischl walks up to the office. What's on the door? Is there anything on the door? Uh, the door is open. Inside, there is a room with a desk and, like, a secretary typing at a computer. And then you can see another door, uh, like, to one side that's open that has uh, Nil's name on it. Uh, and Fishy looks at the secretary, stops for a second, looks outside again, looks at the secretary, points at the other door, gets ushered through. Uh, Gishlak. Yes, yes. Uh, they stand up behind a nice wooden desk. There's a chair already sitting on the other side of the desk waiting for you. They stand up, re extend a hand to handshake. Representative Fischl! Oh, just call me Fishy. Okay, uh, Representative Fishy, it is good to see you here. And how are you? Er, and Thank you, Representative Gishlak. And uh, it what, has to be uh, Representative Nil. Representative Neil, I'm still yes. trying to yes. figure this out, as you can know. Uh, what calls no. me here today? Well, please take a seat. Of course. They sit back down themselves. You notice that your chair is like a few inches lower than theirs. <laughs> so now they're at even height. 
Yeah. Like, Gishlak isn't short, but Fishy's pretty tall, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, I've been receiving some messages that there have been some disagreements between the Terminal Company and the Blue Sky Endowment, and I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Uh, this is the first I've heard of that. Oh, well, what I heard is that someone from the Terminal Company seemed to think that the trophy room at Hestial University should really belong to them, since they're the ones who earned one of those trophies. And, well, I, I agree with the complaint. We have to understand our roles here in this war. There are the people who do the fighting, and there are the people who make the fighting appear as just as it actually is. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Uh, yeah, there are people who are taking risks, and there are people who are profiting off of it. But the Blue Sky Endowment is not profiting by any means. They're doing their job just as you and your comrades do yours. And each job is essential. If this war ends with all the blood and guts and smoke and oil from, you know, your frontline AVs, then no one will look at what we did here on Logel and say, Ah, uh, yes, the DFS was right. We need heroes. <laughs> and the problem is, real heroes, real heroes like you and your squad, don't always look like it to someone, you know, 40 systems away, reading about it in the news over their morning cup of tea. Heroes? Heroes are the ones in the mud. There's no heroes in Terminal Company. They're just the people fighting and dying. While you get to sit there pretty. This is bullshit. Anyway, I did want to extend this as an apology for not being able to give you our full trophy room. And pulls up like a little, uh, like, you know, overnight order trophy. With just like, terminal company, keeping it real, or something like that. <laughs> It'd be more official than that. That's all I can think of right now. Good at war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> terminal company, the real heroes. <laughs> Turns around uh, this trophy, uh, looking at it. You know, Legislator Nil, we at Terminal Company, deep breath. I appreciate the gesture, Legislator Nil. Yes, I'm glad. I know it is not nearly enough, so I wanted to offer you this. Um, the Blue Sky Endowment is currently receiving some outsized returns on some investments. So I feel like we could funnel some of our supply towards the much more dangerous, as you explain, and as I agree, work that the terminal company is doing. And all I would ask in exchange is the terminal company not throw other less prepared squads under the bus when we go about assigning missions. Under the bus? I'm just stating facts. I guess what I'm saying is Someone is going to get sent on a dangerous mission. Someone is going to set, get sent on a mission that needs real firepower. And some people are going to get sent on missions that look good to the public. I understand you wanting the best for the terminal company. And I want the best for them too. But we also need to utilize our resources towards the ends they are best designed. Everyone in this whole building just talks in circles yeah sorry you're you're new with this i'm i'm sorry it's it's a habit it's a bad habit to get out of look legislator nil our squad doesn't doesn't really care about blue sky endowment you know they, they've got a little positivity there but or negativity in whatever but what really matters what really is going to keep happening is death. Like I said, the heroes are in the mud. They're not out there shooting. And to call me a hero, I'm so, I'm just insulted. So I, I didn't mean for that trophy like, to be for you specifically. I meant like, for you to, you know, present it to, you know, this the, the soldiers who are actually fighting out there. 
it's an excuse. It's a consolation prize, being a hero. We're not trying to be heroes out there. We're trying to hold the front line. Thank you for the trophy, Neil. I, I appreciate your determination, Fishy. I'll be taking my leave now. Okay, I will see you in committee. All right, it sounds like that's the scene. Mm-hmm. Oh, there... I did not expect that to end that way, but <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> that, no, knowing that happened before Fishy gave his speech is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> it is very good. Yeah. I would have put more teeth in. Uh-huh. It sounds like there's probably no exchanges of uh, votes yeah. or supplies there. No. I was offering you my plus one supply and you didn't take it for some reason. Weird. <laughs> so, just Red and Fishy left to do actions. Which one of you has something in mind? I mean, I have something in mind... The thing is, I also want to work straight with Fishy. That's fine. Sometimes there are main characters in an episode. It happens. Sometimes, sometimes. I was strategic here. Yeah. Gavin, do you want to do your scene before mine, or...? I don't have a a good idea of what my scene is yet. Okay, okay. I think. Sure. I think mine is... I think maybe Red comes after... Fishy gets back from speaking with the good doctor. They get asked to come to Red's office. Who who sends for Fishy? Is it just like an automated system of some variety, or does Red have a runner? Or I I kind of was on the assumption that we had like a pool of interns or something like that that we could just assign stuff to, whether those are like political students or or robots or something like that i don't know well the thing about the dfs is that it is an incredibly multicultural organization well faction right and so there are probably different like i know for a fact that members of y'all's squads come from several different planets and systems and so i think also squads themselves you know have different systems of origin so i think the representatives would also have different methods of uh, communicating with each other. Like maybe there is a rep who has like basically a drone or a, a flock of quad rotor drones that flies around to deliver messages and pick up small deliveries and what have you. But there are definitely people who just uh, have interns, as you said, who just uh, run about on their behalf. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe I'll think a little bit more about that for Red in particular. I think in this instance, I think what happens is Fishy is in his office and there's a knock at the door and Red like pokes his head in and is like, hey, do you have a moment? Fishy is at his desk. There's papers everywhere. I think Red can immediately, just from like looking at this, deduce that fishy doesn't have a security clearance yet right because <laughs> why would he uh-huh and like all of this paperwork is to get a security clearance but he puts down the the pen leans back i've always got a moment come on in they got you drowned in here huh yeah well uh i didn't realize you could have a a secretary uh I'm going to have to requisition one of those from my squad later. Yeah, good luck. What was it you needed? Here, let's go, let's go to mine. Okay. Leads you a short jump down the hall to Red's office, which, as far as the camera is concerned, is in the exact same spot, but now has a nice chair, a nicer chair for guests, a DFS flag on the wall, a water cooler, a mini fridge, a well-organized <laughs> desk. Deep breath. Can I get you some? I'll pass. Gets you a a tonic water without saying anything else. Just holds it. Gestures to a seat. We I know we haven't had a moment. There's um there's lots going on, but you know, I wanted to make sure that we had a moment at least to to touch base and say hello. I uh, he looks sort of distant. 
every everyone else in this building talks in circles. Um, I wanted I wanted to make sure that at least the two of us knew that there was some straight at least one other straight shooter. Finally, what was it you needed or wanted? <laughs> well, uh, I would would kill to have that level of get up and go again. It's um, it's it's been it's been a bit. Um, truth be told, I'm concerned. You know, I'm not going to judge the sort of circumstances that people have had in their lives, but uh, a lot of people don't necessarily realize what all goes into fighting a war the way that you and I might. And I'm concerned from all the sorts of things that people have been saying that there might be a push to do a lot more talking when fighting is what the situation calls for. I don't love war. If I could snap my fingers right now and say, hey, you know what? War's done. Everyone go home. I'd snap them so hard they'd never mend back up. But the war is here, and we can't stop them. And I have a feeling the Empire is... Not going to be in a talking mood anytime soon. So I just want to know that my squad, that zero accountability, is going to be allowed to continue doing whatever it is that they need to do to stay alive out there. Know what I mean? Like what? You know about Tempestia? Uh, do I know about Tempestia? Is that the. Fishy almost certainly okay, knows about Tempestia. Squads. Yeah. I've heard stories. Never saw her on the battlefield myself. Yeah, you wouldn't have. You're still standing here. Tempestia well, is hell itself. She is what the Empire sends in when they want to make sure that no one else comes back. She is here. Excuse me. Uh, that's not true. I keep forgetting we're not on uh, the place. She is in yep. Hest... Sorry, just to be clear. Yep. You are on Logal... You just aren't in Hestiel. Right, that's it. Thank you, thank you. She is in Hestiel. I don't know why. We haven't been able to figure it out yet. But if she's here, then the Empire has their sights on this place. And they have sent their sharpest sword to the front lines. Zero accountability needs to be allowed to continue to hold her back as best as they can. I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that they stay safe. That they're not diverted to some deep dive on Kalazar's uh, deeper meaning. So you want my vote to ensure that... That they're allowed to continue operating as that they have, regardless of what the faction overall may choose to do. In pursuit of destroying Tempestia. Slow nod. I'm not so foolish to think that I can steer the whole ship. I just want to make sure that I'm looking out for my sailors. Why Tempestia? Why not one of the other major players? The Chameleon Rangers, the Serpent Fangs, the 501st. Sometimes a fight comes looking for you. And even if you've got other priorities, you got to extricate yourself from the situation you're already in. Zero accountability is at war with Tempestia. I'm not going to say that those other targets aren't also good, but you got to do things in order. One at a time. Nodding. I'm just doing the arithmetic in my head, but you're at war with Tempestia. Yes, indeed. Which means you're real low on votes. Spreads his hands. I'm happy to help you out. Yeah, that's why I'm talking then, to you. There, there's Big suddenly smile. like a a chill coming uh -huh. from Fishy. Uh-huh. I'm happy to help you out, but this my vote's going to cost two supply. They've already got their hooks in you, huh? No comment. Yeah, I vote. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of votes. I'm not a politician. I'm a soldier. I thought that I was speaking to another soldier. Gets up from his desk to go back around to the back. I suppose appearances can be deceiving. Yeah, you'll get your two supply. Get the fuck out of my office. Fishy claps his hands. Of course. Heads out, but before he closes the door, there's all kinds of soldiers out there. Red. 
All right. right. That was a phenomenal scene. <laughs> nice. So Red, make a new connection with Fishy. And uh-huh. Fishy, you've got the last scene before we start voting. You want to give another speech? Yeah, I just got to write this note. <laughs> or you want to trade some more horses? I think I want a horse trade with the 86 with Zongdre. That's me. I was going to say, that's the only uh, rep you haven't had a horse trading scene with this session. So I'd invite you to my office. Knock, knock. It's open. Door handle kind of like turns open. Zondre peeks his head in, looks around. He's like, he kind of whistles and steps in. He's like, ah, my place isn't nearly this big. Yeah, they got me drowning in here, though. Doesn't feel very big at all. Yeah. I kind of get that feeling. Now, I invited you. I'm not I'm not someone who wants to beat around the bush. Well, bushes don't deserve to be beaten. (laughs) We can agree (laughs) on that. You and I are fighting a different war than the rest of the legislators here. That's uh, unfortunately, that's the name of the game with politics. It's a bunch of heads charging different ways. And our job is to, you know. Make sure that we go in one vague, agreeable direction. And I've heard down the pipeline that you're trying to push a liaise strategy. Well, you also made a whole speech about it, so it it, <laughs> it was a big bird. I'm not going to convince you otherwise, but I just wanted to tell you in private that I don't think Kalaskan has what we're looking for. May I sit down? All they do is inspire kids to enlist in the military. And then there's a flashback of Fishy growing up watching Kalazcon and then hearing about this attack on Hestial and enlisting and then landing and losing his whole squad or his whole team of toughs in the rain just holding somebody in the mud back to the office. That's a pretty successful bit of propaganda if we were to look over yonder. Certainly kicked into full swing. It's got, you know, big brass sweating a little bit. Aren't you the big brass here now? Well, we make the decisions, but... uh, We're not the ones directly given orders. We're not the ones, you know, with the eyes right on the battlefield, so to speak. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes. Then why are you pushing this plan? What's your goal here? Well, I think there is merit in knowing our enemies, that we can better manipulate them to our own ends. Kay gives the, um, the, what's his name, the Seinfeld writer... Like, eh, eh. Larry David. Larry David, like, one way, other way. I guess I can understand that. And maybe I was a little bit inspired by Gishlak's plan. Deep breath. Exhale. I have heard worse plans. Sandra, you seem like a good guy, and I feel like we're in similar boats. Maybe you know what you're doing a little better than me. And I'm glad you you came to talk to me about this. And I hope we can talk more in the future. Zagre kind of steps a little bit closer, takes off his glasses and says, Can I level with you, though? Absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of winging it here just a little bit. There's, uh, I can't say too much, but, uh, Things that have been happening that kind of threw a lot of my own original plans kind of like completely into the shredder. Fishy holds up a finger, looking around, and whispers, Not here. Zondre tucks his lips inward, nods very rapidly. Pats a hand on your shoulder. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one trying to figure things out. Maybe we can work together in the future. Great. I look forward to that. You seem like a very level-headed guy, very 
knows what he wants and doesn't let a lot of the uh, a lot of elbow pushing get to him. So you know, I'd say I'm a single issue voter, but those don't exist. Well, Zandre straightens up, adjusts his tie. You have my contact info, right? That's how I got to you. Right. Uh, that's that is correct. Um, I did get that email. So, um, I'm looking forward to a lucrative future for both of us. Absolutely. A couple of knuckle knocks on the desk, and uh, I believe that's where Zandre takes his leave. Unless there was anything else. Nope. I think that's it. Oof. Okay. So. After uh, some very intense scenes from everybody, does she remember to add another belief about Sandre for your horse trading? And let's uh, go over how everyone's beliefs have changed since the start of the session. Dr. Kane, what are your beliefs? What, what's been added since we began? Oh, I've got a, I've got a lot of new beliefs. I have uh, one more with basically everyone and two more with Fishy. So uh, for Zandre, I started with... Uh, do you want to read my original one as well? Yeah, let's get all of them. Okay. For Zandre, I said, we share a similar past. If we were here, we might have been friends. Or if we weren't here, we might have been friends. His priorities are misaligned. If we continue down his path, it'll go very poorly. For Red, I said, Red's methods will only make the war harder to win. He must be tempered. And then I also said, Red is too set in his ways to see anything better. I'll need a coalition to stop him. For Fishy, I said, Fishy could be a good ally, but only if he agrees to win the war before we leave. And then after the speech, I said, Fishy needs a mentor. And if it's not me, it'll be somebody else. <laughs> and then after my horse trading, I said, I hope Fishy knows a gifts when he sees one, but I'm not sure he does. For Gishlak... Geshlak knows the way to the hearts of the people of Jovangle. Geshlak's motivations are unclear. I need to understand them before teaming up. Okay. Red, what are your beliefs now? Oh, boy. I started with Zandra, a guppy uh, in a tank full of hungry sharks. And, of course, I have now added Zandra is going to get himself killed. With Geshlak nil, uh, a nightmare of a human being in a gaudy bathrobe. I've added Gishlak is dangerous, and that could be useful. And Gishlak sees the value in respect. I still just have the one with a good doctor. Doctor has altogether too much faith in humanity. For Fishy, I started with about as noble as the paper he's made out of, and added Fishy is going to get himself killed, and just recently, insubordinate. <laughs> is that a verb or an adjective? <laughs> It's a noun. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of fishy, what are your beliefs now? Zandra, us newbies need to stick together. Is Zandra wasting resources or am I missing something? I'm not missing anything. Zandra has a secret. I need to find out where it's safe. Red is just the one. What's this guy even doing here? <laughs> Dr. Kane, just the one. Her ends are right, but her means concern me. Gishlak nil. I had squad mates who defected from Jovangel. Jovangel. Was Gishlak their inspiration? Gishlak gets AIDS? They are so much more put together than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe one day. Gishlak, what are your beliefs? Zandra, I have I already had that he reminds me of myself 20 years ago. Great potential. And now I also think Zandra's enthusiasm is naive, but not fully unwarranted. With Red, I still just have that he is definitely committed to more crimes. Mm. With Dr. Kane, I also just have Dr. Kane understands the true purpose of our war. And then with Fishy, I have three now. I still want to live up to Fishy's faith in the system. Fishy does not respect my work or the importance of his own. And Fishy has a real backbone, a stronger one than mine. All right. And Zandre? All right. So uh, with Red, still we only have the one. I can benefit from his first-hand experience. Looking forward to see how that changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with 
fishy. We can mutually benefit from each other's causes. Uh, and the second one is, I, I can agree that you can't negotiate without a position of strength, I guess. That was because of the presentation, the Secure the Borders presentation. Dr. Kane, I respect the diplomatic approach, even if it's easier said than done. And then with uh, Nil, they've got a keen grasp on propaganda. I should be wary around them. Their plans aren't without merit, but implementing them could be complicated. And then finally, kind of to mirror red, Gishlak is well-intentioned, and that could be useful. All right, so we've got a whole lot of uh, convoluted plotting brewing. Now it's time for some votes. So the first votes we are going to cast are on what the DFS's strategy is going to be in Cycle 2. Any squads that don't get a specific mission assigned to them will fall back to this overall strategy for the faction. The way this is going to work is that there are four different strategies that we can pick from. There's attack, bankroll, investigate, and liaise. Attack is about a squad attacking an enemy squad with the intent of damaging its holdings, materiel, and or personnel. Bankroll is about a squad gathering resources for the faction, likely at the expense of an enemy squad. Investigate is about a squad gathering information about a location, operation, project, technology, etc. that is under enemy control. And Liaise is a squad seeks to improve relationships with an enemy squad to mutual benefit, or at least the benefit of our faction. Any legislator may propose a strategy. Does anyone want to propose an attack strategy? Is, is pizza not going to propose a, an attack strategy? No, I was going to. I'm I'm concerned about tactic strategy for them. Okay, so sounds like the overall strategy is not going to be attack. Does anyone want to propose a bankroll strategy? That also sounds like a no. Does mm -hmm. anyone want to propose an investigate strategy? That would be me. Who is that? That would be me. I'm Sandra. Proposing a... Sandra. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we have a proposal for investigate. And does anyone want to propose a liaise strategy? I would. That's Dr. Kane. Now, this is interesting. Yes. Because Kane and Gishlak, I think, both want a liaise, but liaise with very different targets. I was wondering how that was going to resolve. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to come up in the um, second half. Yes. I thought so. Okay. All, All right. right. So the way we are going to vote, Investigate will be labeled A, and Liaise will be labeled B. In our Discord, I want everyone to put as many letters in the legislator's chat, but don't hit enter yet, as you have put as many letters as you have votes. If you put an A, it'll be a vote for Investigate. If you put a B, it'll be a vote, vote for Liaise. And remember, you do not have to vote for anything that you've... Uh, gotten paid for already it's purely on an honor system you've already got the cash in hand and then also to clarify so we have however many votes for this first round and when for the next round we also have that same number of votes correct okay your votes reset between strategy and missions okay so has everyone entered their letters mm -hmm. yes i okay hit enter question mm-hmm can we vote on our own thing? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Damn, okay. that tier three squad really makes it come in close in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that is uh, Gishlak voting for Investigate and Zandre voting for Investigate, while Red, Dr. Kane, and Fishy all vote for Liaise. And Liaise wins with five votes to Investigate's four. I am like very eyes emoji at like red's vote for liaise there red winks oh yes. no actually i have, i'm very <laughs> curious what is everyone's reaction to how this vote went we already got a an idea of what dr kane and red's reactions are what about uh fishy i think i voted for the wrong thing <laughs> 
because a Dr. Cade paid me to vote for I thought was liaise. Yeah. 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 It's, okay. You did that right, <laughs> or at least you okay. did that according to the deal we made. I don't know if you did uh, that right. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Fishy, the, like, actually casting the vote and then, like, being, like, completely head over, like, wait, what? <laughs> is very good. <laughs> Did I do yeah. that, I think? <laughs> <laughs> and what about Gishlak? Uh, they are a little bit content. They sit back down like, yeah, this is about what I expected. They're happy that they managed to show their, uh, were able to keep a deal with Sandra, while still actually getting the result they did want. And Zandra's reaction? I think when the votes come in, the pen flipping and turning stops for a moment, and Zandra purses his lips and kind of looks down and like looks just the mildest bit disappointed, but just kind of lets it go. Okay. So, just before we move... Well, actually, I was going to say, just before we move on, does anyone want to spend a drive clock? But the thing that Red voted for already won, so I'm guessing he isn't going to spend a drive clock on that. It's true. Or on Investigate, for that matter. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> for those wondering, ties are decided by the Speaker of the House, me. If, if we were, if Investigate was about something else aside from investigating the 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 deeper understanding of people that go to the <laughs> Kaliskan then <laughs> then um red red might be into it just for the sake of causing chaos but uh, <laughs> given gi given the circumstance i don't think so i actually have another question about like for Rizia Katana so the speaker of the house gets the deciding vote for ties but like is there a rule about how the Speaker of the House votes, or is that just based on the character's vibes? And if so, what are the vibes of the character? Fabrizio Catana is the elder statesman in this legislature, but mm -hmm. they are also kind of on the outs sure. with the larger DFS political body, right? Yeah. This operation to take Logel, Operation Cromwell has been going for three years when it was supposed to take, like, six months. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute boondoggle for the DFS. And his predecessor was here in a place of pride. But now Fabrizio has taken over as... was not here prior to their predecessor leaving. They've been yeah. sent in after the predecessor moved on to greener pastures. So they are unhappy to be here is the general vibe, uh -huh. but they know that their role as speaker is to remain fairly aloof. So they okay. don't really interact with any of the representatives outside of the legislature floor. And even then in a purely functional and formal role. I've always had the, the kind of idea that like, they they kind of expected that they were like kind of on the road to retirement and now has been given a job again, kind of against their will. Yeah, that's not wrong. Mm -hmm. I think they're probably in their fifties. They've got salt and pepper hair, long shoulder length, and a ponytail. Mm -hmm. Sort of soft body, heavy bags under their eyes. I think that if Red had not like kept up with presumably his training, mm -hmm. he'd probably have a similar shape to Fabrizio. But Fabrizio right. is a politician through and through and always has been. So, yeah. A soft and tired person who does not want to be here, but understands their duty in being here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's time to vote for tactics. So tactics are when you assign specific squad to a specific type of mission. The way this works is each legislator may propose one tactic. A tactic consists of an assigned squad, an operation, and one detail. An assigned squad is one of the DFS's squads that will carry out the tactic. 
The possible operations are attack, bankroll, investigate, and liaise. These function the same as their strategic level equivalents. And the detail can be the targeted enemy squad or a specific objective. So for instance, you might say you want to assign pizza on an operation of attack, and the detail can be Tempestia. Or that, that's a good idea. The <laughs> detail could be Hall H. Or the detail could be attack with the goal of stealing the Horizon Blue AV from the Vermin. Mm. Well, stealing a Horizon Blue, but the Vermin have it. So. Right, right. Cool. So, Dr. Kane, do you want to propose a tactic? You do not yes. have to. Okay, what do you propose? Hmm. If you want to defer, we can ask if anyone else has a tactic already in mind. I think I have one question first, actually. So, as a player, I was able to have the privilege of sitting and listening through all of those scenes that we just had. But my character wasn't. How much am I allowed to know about the intentions of other legislators that are discussed in private? I think we should lean into dramatic irony here. So, unless your character was in the same scene as the other person, then yeah. you don't know what's happening. Maybe if there was, like, a blow-up of some variety, you might have heard about it. <laughs> so you, 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 I don't think Red was quite loud enough for anyone to hear him say, and tell Fishy to fuck <laughs> off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to clarify that I wouldn't have the, I, I, I shouldn't say that, like, oh, I should declare that, or suggest that Pizza have a liaise mission with Tempestia. No. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think I'll defer then. Okay. Does anyone have a mission in mind offhand? Yes. Okay. Fishy, what is your mission in mind? For for what squad is it assigned? Terminal Company. What is the operation? Attack. And what is the detail? 501st Squad. All right. Does anyone else have a mission idea? Yes. Red proposes the zero accountability attack to Bestia. I had a feeling. <laughs> 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 Who had one as well? I do. Uh, Gishlak proposes that we send the Blue Sky Endowment to bankroll from the Hermit Crabs. Anyone next have one idea? Zandre or Dr. Kane? I do have one if we're ready for that. Yes. I'm going to say that the Farm of State should liaise with the Hive. That's a good one. And Zandre? Well, my squad did say get them into trouble, so... You try and kill, kill Tempestia first. <laughs> you know, if we manage to do that... What tier is Tempest uh, Tempestia, by the way? She is two. Too strong. Bad. You could also propose a different squad do something and then pull your weight with three votes. And that would be very funny. That would be funny, but I also really like the drama of sending the 86 six after Tempestia, just because they're tier three, Tempestia's tier two. An important note about Tempestia, the squad, is that Tempestia herself is a rival and also has another rival in her squad. So there will be two NPCs that the 86 cannot permanently remove as a threat without spending two drive clocks. Ooh. Gosh. So that's getting them into trouble for sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I wonder, Ooh. you could also, you could also, I think, would also be very funny, is to attack the hive. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that's trouble. <laughs> That is trouble. Yeah, like, we're going in to attack them, someone else wants to bankroll with them. If I may make a suggestion, consider what, if you're really torn, consider why Zandre might make these assignments right. for the 86, 
right? Like, some of these ideas are fun, like attacking Tempestia. Yes. Right. But does that make sense for Zandre to send his infantry squad he's supposedly looking after against a, like, ace Avi pilot and her support staff? Yeah, definitely not. I mean, it could if there's a good reason. I'm just it saying could, these are could. things to be considered. Yeah. Like, what, what, what Zandre thinks is a good idea is probably paramount. Yeah. I don't think he's too eager to have them go, like, throwing their necks on the line against, like, a tough opponent. Unless, like, he personally thinks that he could get something out of it that would, like, get him, like, some leverage. And I don't really see any leverage he could get by doing that right now. So... Here's, here's an idea. You just made this push to investigate Kalazar, and it didn't go yes. through, right? Yeah. Is there a part of Zandra that's like, well... I'm going to tell the 86 to investigate Kalazar, and you're not going to be able to stop me. That's actually what I was going to suggest. Yeah. And that has the benefit of being a quote-unquote safe mission. <laughs> safe, quote-unquote. Right. Well, it's not It's not attacking Tempestia, so. <laughs> you say safe, right. but, then like, but then like, you know, the Kalazcon attendees and Kalazcon Kalazcon is perfectly and safe. Are shooting at you with like real actual rifles. <laughs> it's so safe in there. <laughs> it's safe. Uh -huh. TM. I'm not going there, but it is safe. <laughs> I hear it's safe. Uh huh. The pamphlet says it's safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you might have to sign a clause. Maybe. Austin, what would be the best place to go in Kalazcon to investigate the deeper meaning of what it means to be a fan of Kalazar? Well, that one. really depends upon what you imagine, because Hall H has all of the panels and uh, people showing up and stuff, and Artist's mm. Alley has, you know, what the fans really feel. Right. Or you could live it up and uh, experience Kalazar firsthand in Curse, oh, or you, you could see how Kalazgon has negatively impacted the, the Jovengelian locals by go going to Zyre Park, that sounds a like refugee a haven. I am torn between Curse and Hall H. Flip a coin? I think I'm going to send them to Curse on a uh, investigative mission. Great. Good. That's okay. what I want to propose to the 86. That's the proposals all in. So just as a summary, Terminal Company is going to attack the 501st. Pizza is going to attack Tempestia. Blue Sky is going to bankroll via the crabs, the hermit crabs. The farm upstate will li liaise with the hive. And the 86 will investigate curse. Now, this is assuming that all of these get at least one vote. If mm. none, if one of these doesn't get any votes, that squad <laughs> will go back to the overall strategy. And since there are no conflicting squad assignments, that means that only one vote is required to make it go through. Okay, so A, B, C, D, and E. Put in the legislator's chat a number of letters equal to the number of votes that you get. All right. Zandre's ready. I'm ready. Dr. Kane's ready. Ready. Red's ready. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. Fishy. I'm ready. Okay, everybody hit enter. <laughs> okay, let's see. What do we got here? We have two votes for C. We've got three votes for B. We've got two votes for D. And one vote for A. And two votes for E. So that is... One vote for E. For E. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Gishlak uses their one vote to help ensure that Blue Sky is going to bankroll via the crabs. And Zandre also votes for that. Why does Gishlak only have one vote? Because Blue Sky is a tier one squad. Oh, you have the two tokens down here. Oh, that's my bad. Okay. Terminal Company, with one vote, is assigned to attack the 501st, thanks to Fishy. Uh, Pete Zah is ordered to attack Tempestia, with three votes 
from Dr. Kane, from Fishy, and from Red. But not one from Gishlak, notably. <laughs> Nor from I, I said I wouldn't vote against it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I only have the one vote. That's true. That's me forgetting the details of the uh, deal. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. You can still be... The Farm Upstate gets two votes to liaise with the Hive, voted on by Dr. Kane and Zandre. And the 86 gets one vote to investigate Curse, with one vote from Zandre. There's no need to rely on the overall strategy, because every single squad got assigned a specific mission. After the last vote of the day is cast, Fabrizio Katana bangs their gavel twice and says, This session of the committee for Hestial has been concluded. And they rise and they leave the podium. And that is the end of this legislature session. Thanks for listening to Kala's Con. This episode was edited by me, Austin Ramsey. You can find my work at austin-ramsey.itch.io. Sound balancing for this episode was done by Christine Blight. You can reach her for voice acting at cvblight at gmail.com. The show's music is by Devin Nelson. You can find them on all social media at Devin Decibel. If you'd like to support Kalazcon, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Kalazcon. Please tell your friends about the show, too. Remember, all glory to Kalazar.